there are many ancient places upon our planet, which we are yet to cover upon our channel. Many intriguing, unexplainable, and thus controversial ancient ruins, that, although more than likely discovered and noted by an academic at some point within modern history, has since been banished to selective ignorance deliberately overlooked. This often in favor of retaining one's funding within a certain field of study. Ancient quarries is an area of study that is indeed filled with these ancient anomalies. Seemingly machine stones litter many of the more intriguing locations, one of them undoubtedly Aswan Quarry, not only containing an unfinished obelisk of gigantic proportions, but also seemingly later additions carved as if left by a later advanced civilization. Additionally, the more prehistoric quarries that can be found dotting America's Great Lakes, notably superior, copper mines and quarries fly in the face of currently attested chronology regarding ancient man. We presume that the most compelling of these sites had indeed since their initial modern rediscovery been widely studied by alternative researchers. However, Cava de Cusa seems to have been largely overlooked, regardless of its astonishing ancient relics, which can be found at the site. Located three kilometers south of Campobella di Massara, in the province of Trapani, Italy, the entire quarry, and indeed the length of the ruin, is an astonishing 1.8 kilometers long, located upon a natural ridge spanning from east to west. According to academia, this site was quarried from the beginning of the first half of the 6th century BC. This, regardless of the clearly shifted, mysteriously abandoned, gigantic, unexplainable megaliths which still litter the site. We feel, with such unexplainably large stones seemingly left in situ at the site, like many other unexplained sites that can be found on Earth, were built by an advanced ancient civilization capable of building with such enormous stones. The quarry was abandoned in 409 BC, when it was captured by the Carthaginians. Regardless of academia's limited opinions regarding the quarry, we feel the most interesting and possibly most controversial anomalies to unravel are the abandoned cuts still at the site. Just what were these ancient people making? Why did they abandon these curious megaliths where they lay today? How were they able to shift such enormous stones? We feel there is strong evidence to suggest that Cava de Cusa was an ancient quarry once used and mysteriously abandoned by a lost civilization once capable of shifting unimaginably enormous stones and, as such, is highly compelling. On a number of occasions, we have covered the unexplainable remnants left by a civilization which once undoubtedly flourished here upon this planet. A true mysterious history. The most notable and presumably the evidence which will remain upon our Earth for the longest being the unimaginably enormous megalithic structures which rest in many areas of Earth. These structures built using stones so large, we cannot explain how they were moved. The quarry, known as Yang Shan, is such an impressive example of this lost knowledge and or technique for moving these stones, we felt it deserved an in-depth discussion. What is special about Yang Shan is the fact that it was seemingly abandoned, quite possibly due to cataclysm. In the midst of actually cutting some of the largest stone megaliths ever found on Earth, revealing in all its glory just how these stones were indeed detached from the Earth's bedrock, a question which had also remained unanswered for many years. Yang Shan also reveals invaluable clues to how they could have been moved. The star of the show, an enormous steel weighing 16,250 metric tons, disputed to have been cut during the reign of the Yongkou Emperor, the third ruler of the Ming Dynasty in China, reigning from 1402 to 1424. However, although academia is seemingly willing to approach such subjects with an air of arrogance, often due to its in-depth accurate understanding of said era, it inevitably becomes unstuck 
once one begins to explore their knowledge, or indeed explanation, of how these enormous stones were intended to be moved. Academia's illogical explanation of the site is as follows. In 1405, the Yongle Emperor ordered the cutting of a giant statue in this quarry, for use in the Ming Xiaoling Mausoleum in dedication of his deceased father. Three separate pieces were being cut – the rectangular base, the body, and the head. After most of the stone cutting work had been done, the architects conveniently realized that moving stones from the quarry to Ming Xiaoling and installing them there would not be physically possible. The body weighed 8,799 tons, and the steel's apparent head weighed 6,118 tons. According to quote, experts, it would have stood 73 meters tall. A supposed legend attached to this possible fallacy has it that workers who failed to produce the daily quota of crushed rock of at least 33 shang would be executed on the spot. But is this the real story of Yangshan Quarry? Or could there possibly be a more interesting history attached to this site, and indeed its accompanying stones? Within Baalbek, one of the countless examples found around the world, there are stones well over a thousand tons in weight, which seem to have been effortlessly placed atop one another, using technologies or methods unexplained by these so-called experts. Is it really that unthinkable to believe that they could indeed once shift these enormous stones found in Yangshan? Not only move them, but lift them on top of one another? Fortunately, more and more people are beginning to look at this exact possibility. And with the mounting evidence in support of far greater antiquity surfacing every day, it is only a matter of time before these sites are truly revealed for what they actually once were. To truly understand the astonishingly true history of the unfinished obelisk, one must first wade through a quagmire of well-financed fallacy, infested with many a false prophet, incomplete or simply illogical conjecture, all of which defended by countless academic figures of institutions of influence and power, acquired via the funding in their defense of a form of mass worship of academics' perception, as if an all-knowing authority. So, with things like the obelisk, for example, one begins to wonder if this all be by design. Since academic records of this monument began, no one who has described it, predictably, has ever managed to wrap their head around how such a stone could have possibly ever been moved. Ergo, all well-funded explorers, reporters, and journalists alike, with the expectant pressure of their return with a deciphered mystery. It would appear this explanation never arose, yet was skillfully averted. Firstly, the rock had indeed been abandoned abruptly at some point in history, conveniently allowing academia to make nearly all those interested in the obelisk overlook this eventual intention by its original creators, a distraction made by a fault line. Chris Dunn, an independent investigator held in varied regard, found that details of decoration were already being added to the stone as it was being hewn, running exactly through this so-called fault, disproving this so long-held academic fallacy. Yet, alas, Although the unfinished obelisk lay still attached to the strata of Earth, like that of the larger of the two megaliths in Yangsham Quarry, the largest some 16,000 tons, academia is not required nor would even attempt to provide any logical explanation as to how these blocks would have been moved. Additionally, however, and perhaps most revealing, is the pregnant lady of Lebanon, a 1,000-plus ton megalith, so large that just like that of the unfinished obelisk, no attempt was ever made to explain the ancient civilization responsible could have moved such stones to their final placements. Yet, remarkably, the proverbial nail in the coffin and vindication of our claim was the excavations made around the pregnant woman recently revealing that this stone was not abandoned on a slight incline, as claimed, but was placed atop another stone of even bigger proportions. 
suggesting it was part of a once enormous structure and exposing this reoccurring academic strategy when it comes to dismissing the controversial. It is a reality which we find incredibly annoying. There are a considerable number of ancient anomalies located within Egypt. These ancient feats of engineering litter sites and the quarries the stones were sourced and shaped at. And although many of you would have heard of Aswan Quarry, Elephantine may be a less familiar location to you, and for good reason. Not only are the pyramids one of the most perplexing, near perfectly constructed, and as yet unexplained ancient architectural accomplishments on Earth, but how an ancient civilization, supposedly placed within permitted known archaeological history, accomplished such a feat, or indeed why? What was their original purpose? Academic contradiction, a severe lack of anomalous artifacts explored, never mentioned or somehow conveniently go unnoticed. However, in the real world, beyond the boundaries of the fenced or so-called schools of education, thanks to our own work and the presentation of such a volume of inexplicable events artifacts, ruins or megaliths, along with many others allied within similar fields, independently funded researchers, investigative agents, and many more sometimes even noticed first by a viewer credited with its rediscovery within our coverage. Thanks to all this movement working to expose such enigmas, has meant that not only are these incredible characteristics now being documented, mentioned, popularized, photographed and studied more and more each day, now being recognized by more and more critically thinking individuals individually finding evidence of lost technologies that had until then either been undiscovered or deliberately overlooked by the funded academic. The vast catalog of unexplained architecture, again growing by the day, but also the often accompanying curious stone cuts, scars and striations, all clearly left by high-speed disc-cutting machine, a signature tool mark, identical to that which is left by modern-day power tools, along with the still absent demonstration of the methods used to construct the pyramids, leads anyone to this ongoing and seemingly most controversial of arguments regarding the origins of the ruins found across Egypt. The Colossus of Memnon, each one weighing far over 1,000 tons, would sing every morning an amazing ability we have covered in a previous video, a curious characteristic reported all the way up until the Roman era. We also covered the thick layer of sea salt once found coating the pyramid's ground and underground caverns, along with a water line reported at around 40 meters up their sides still visible during the Spanish invasion. This clearly suggests that the pyramids and their accompanying sphinx are in reality so old they even had once been submerged in ocean waters. An ancient ocean which over the eons has shifted, leaving behind sediment in the form of the desert sands. There are many enormous ancient megalithic stones hidden in and around the three great pyramids of Egypt. Not only are there enormous ancient stones virtually hidden in plain sight, thus although walked across, largely overlooked, hardly ever mentioned, and never explained in regards to their transport and placement, as modern academia will never be able to provide a logical, sound explanation for these feats. The casing stones, an area of interest we have explored and documented, not only displayed vastly different ages but also construction methods and types of stone sourced and used. Ultimately, undeniable proof of efforts to preserve the outer stones of these incredible ancient pyramids later on within their history. Signature tool marks, unique features such as protuberances, masonry shapes, polygonal stonewalling, and many other features which we have discovered during our explanations into the relics of lost antiquity. Yet Egypt's most intriguing assets, and we feel the most baffling relics which all alternative historians should have within their debacle armory, are undoubtedly to be found within the once abruptly abandoned quarries. The unfinished obelisk found at Aswan, being one such relic, the most well-known of these incredible stones by a long way, 
Not only is the obelisk over 1,000 tons, but also due to the identifiable scoop-like tool marks left upon its granite sides, a signature scarring, which again, we have so far found, explored and shared this marking at many other ancient sites around the world. Who were the original builders of the Great Pyramids? Were they the same group that quarries Aswan? What tools did these people use to cut many of the relics still left at the Elephantine Island Quarry? How can anyone gaze upon such precision stonework and not ponder? How did he accomplish such an incredible finish with such hard stone, with such soft chisels and those made of copper? Not only do we find the currently attested tale of events vastly incomplete, but in many ways, virtually impossible. Predictably, we are often confronted with an illogical explanation as to the origins of many unexplainable ruins. Yet Egypt, in particular Aswan and Giza, were clearly the work of a group capable of working and building with 1,000 ton plus stones. With columns of pink Aswan granite, weighing over 14 tons each, over 10,000 kilometers to Baalbek. Is this connection mere coincidence? Or are the builders of said sites connected somehow? Possibly one and the same? Questions we get closer to answering every day. We find it highly compelling.